normally when Drake does a video, uh, for all the videos we had done beforehand, he had a vision of it. He knew what he was looking for. So it was really executing a vision and building it and just the way we would collaborate. Drake is a 360 degree artist who puts as much consideration into the visual side of his work as the music itself. In the past decade, he's created iconic visuals, from his videos to his album covers and stage designs. His strategy is to collaborate with top level creatives who help execute and elevate his ideas. Drake understands the power of an attention-grabbing music video. Whether he's being serious, having fun, or making viral moments, his videos are built on simple imagery designed to be shared. I think there are a lot of people in hip hop who like have a character and they stick to it. And I think Drake is not like that. Generally speaking, he can play a bunch of characters. And I think in the social media ecosystem and on the internet, that makes him a lot more fun to engage with. When you're an artist like that, that's one of the ways that you get to have the most fun expressing yourself, and you get to reinvent yourself every time you do a music video. Drake is a really interesting, brilliant artist when it comes to his music videos. You know, for instance, you know he has a great sense of humor. 2016, if you remember the year, it was a good time. He's not like trying to be some hard rock guy. You know, the dancing. And you know, all that, that he's having a great time. You know, I think that people want to see their stars having a great time. And I say, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. I mean, come on, like, I don't think there's ever been another bar mitzvah in a rap video, or maybe even in a video ever before. Yeah. The energy video where he had his face changed into Rob Ford and Justin Bieber. Just tell me it ain't really friends. Ex -girl, she the I think First of all, is like there is a, um, a desire to push boundaries. He's aware of everything that is new and everything that is gonna be new. <laughs> He's creating the trend. Well, run up when you see me, then we gonna see. Drake's closest music video collaborator by far has been Toronto's own Director X. I think if you look at music videos uh, throughout almost their whole history in Canada. Director X is there. He really put the visual stamp on a lot of those early hip hop artists coming out of Canada, whether it's uh, Cardi or Chuck Larry. Those early rappers in Toronto. And of course, once he began working with Drake, he began to see that blow up even bigger. If the image of Drake awkwardly dancing in a turtleneck in front of neon lights is forever burned in your memory, you can thank Director X. Toronto's Julian Lutz, AKA Director X, is the person behind some of Drake's most memorable videos, including Started From The Bottom and Hotline Bling. Director X got his start interning for famed music video director, Hype Williams, in the late 90s. Director X worked on some of Williams' most iconic productions, including the 1998 film, Belly. It was that same year that Director X got his first break as a solo director on EPMD's Richter Scale. X has gone on to direct not only music videos for Jay-Z, Justin Bieber, and Drake, but also directed the 2018 reboot, Superfly. You know there's a difference between getting out and being pushed out. Director X also introduces Drake to another key music video collaborator, Toronto's Karina Evans, the young talent behind Drake's viral videos for songs like God's Plan, God's plan. God's plan. Nice For What, it's all right. and, up, but it's all right. and the Degrassi reunion, I'm Upset. I'm upset. Finding global success with both Evans and Director X reveals that creating memorable visual content is more than an accident. It's core to Drake's strategy. Director X is very important because he has his own name and his own brand already. So there's, there's an element of 
two powerhouse, you know, creative minds coming together. You think about your life and your lens of the world as an icon, you really need to create something and build with other people who see the world in the same way. A big, big important feature of his work is the homegrown element of it. X is not afraid to put Canadian things in his video, Canadian locations, landmarks, and this has been happening way before even the Drake videos. They stay very close to home in that sense. They're very proud of where they come from. It won't happen, I paid my dues. Brother, see me sacrifice another song in the key of life. I mean, it's great. Look, we all got a bit of hometown pride. I mean, so it feels good to, to see your city on the map. Un unthinkable when I was a kid. And then we did start from the bottom and the first shot was the logo of the Parks and Recs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shoppers Drug Mart. The only way that video could have been, we, we should have done something at Tim Hortons to really round out the full Canadian experience. Drake applies the same visual approach to his album covers, working with artists and photographers to portray simple but iconic images. I would describe Drake's artistic style to be classic. I would catalog him around the Renaissance era because he's focused on, you know, simple, classic, strong emblems, and he doesn't really stray away from that. All of his album art, to me, looks so singularly focused on him as a person where he's at in that time. I think Drake's album covers really depict what album you're getting from him. I think every album cover that Drake has says something, you just have to figure out what it is. When Drake needed a portrait for 2013's Nothing Was the Same, he looked to Kadir Nelson. Nelson is an artist best known for his paintings depicting African-American culture and history. His work has been featured on covers of The New Yorker and on US stamps. For the Drake album, we kind of flew around to different places. We went to Canada, to New York, and then to Miami. He kind of left it open for me to interpret. I just know that he wanted to create album cover artwork that would be iconic and classic. I think what we both liked about it was that here's this little baby looking at a version of himself in the future, kind of aspiring to be that guy. And then the adult version looking at his infant self and thinking, you know, I used to be that little kid and I want to cherish, you know, those moments as a little kid. Aspire to something great, but don't get lost in the journey getting there. I would hope in some way that's, that is the message that's communicated. Drake also brings his talent for artistic collaboration to his stage shows. He creates big, memorable symbols on a stadium-sized scale. If you think about stage design in general, you can look at it and you can feel it, but do you really say like, wow, I'm so proud of that, that represents me. And I think that's what makes him different. I think his heart is always involved. He's always involved in the narrative and the storytelling. I think he makes things that are iconic. I think he makes things that are translatable to the masses. He doesn't stray from this iconic language. He's looking for the big show, the wow. And that's what I know he loves to deliver at home and he loves to deliver to the rest of the world. Most tours and most artists just deal with the standard in-stage show where Drake, well, we're looking at one guy on the stage commanding a 40 by 60 stage all by himself. He loves that energy, he loves that interaction. Drake was looking for something to add to his live show when he saw Death of the Sun, an exhibit at Nuit Blanche created by his longtime collaborator, Director X, and art producer, Umberin Anayat. I felt like I really wanted to create something and collaborate with somebody who I felt would influence culture. Director X said, there's so much senseless violence that's going on in this world. And he reflected on that. And I said, thinking about your life and everything you stand for, he said, well, what if, you know, the son were to die? And I was like, oh my God, that's the artwork. It was something that completely blew all of our minds because it ended up being a huge success. City Hall in Toronto, every culture in the world will be represented there. So for us to all look around the square, hopefully, and be like, oh, just us, huh? <laughs>
four months later, I was like lying in bed and then X called me, you know, with his manager. And I was like literally shot right up when he said, you know, Drake wanted to take it on tour with him. He was thinking about like, you know, what can he do that could bring something that has more depth, you know, into his stage that he felt, I guess, was missing at the time. Drake was very, very open to learning about the meaning and the depth and the history, you know, behind the artwork. And he wanted to translate that to the public. It was really interesting and exciting. And I have to say, it really changed my life. It really changed my life because I really understood how public art can make that crossover and translate into the stage in such a meaningful and powerful way. You know, maybe this could be a whole new public art movement that we haven't even thought of. Realizing the impact large-scale art had on his audience, Drake incorporated it into the strategy for his live show. He teamed up with GPSK Designs for some of his most iconic set pieces. Even though we're on the cusp of a really cool idea, he pushes us to move that cool idea into an amazing idea. Drake's most famous work with GPSK Designs by far was the recreation of the CN Tower at the OVO Fest in 2017. But we actually started with the original blueprints to uh, scale into perspective and then started working on all of our material and all that in a time frame, which was insanely tight. Three weeks, we literally were turned down by 28 fabrication companies. We called everybody in North America because there was the time frame, he just wouldn't give up on the idea. Even though I'd already told him that 28 companies had turned us down, he, I remember the call him telling me, I know you're gonna figure this out. I was ready to do it it's extremely important in this industry to keep progressing and evolving, or else you're, it's just the same show that we see every other week of the year. And that's what's ultimately happened, whether it's been with the kinetic system, whether it's been with the jungle, all the different things, all the different elements that nobody else is really creating. From the day that we took him on as a client, we've always known that his interaction and why he's great at what he does is the relationship he has with his audience, the relationship that he has with his fans. He's constantly giving it back, and we believe that that's why he's extremely successful. We always, uh, we, listen, every one of his ideas. We always start outlandish. Yeah. And then I mean, we have to back it into reality, even when he doesn't like hearing that part. Yeah. And then it goes back into outlandish again, so, you know. But, but that's what makes him who he is. Drake's strategy for his visual world has rooted in making eye-catching images that are meant to be shared and riffed off of. His visual work completely dominates the online world. I don't know if Drake loves the internet, but the internet loves him. <laughs>